Morey uh, will start talking about <laughs> DevConf in Debian. Well, technically, I think the title of this year is something like DevConf Organization. Um, but for anyone who, wasn't, who hasn't been at the last few years' sequence of boffs on similar topics, we thought we'd quickly run through sli well, the slides from last year and to say basically if anything is, well, where things have changed, if it's changed at all. Um, so yeah, we're not in Bosnia anymore, even though the slides might say that. Uh, so one of the things we did in the past couple of years that most of you probably are familiar with is that we defined what the point of DevConf is or what it's for. Um, this had always been kind of known by people, but we had never actually agreed in any formal written down thing what that was, so there were slight disagreements. Um, so we decided that we'd have primary and secondary goals for DevConf. The, since it is a conference, the main thing is about the face-to-face -face interaction, um, but also at the same time, it, within the primary goals, then providing the talks and video that can be seen by people anywhere in the world. Um, and in it, any time later, after the, the, the fact. <laughs> and providing time for people to work on Debian um, during DevConf itself, as well as during DevCamp. Um, both of them, that's also part of the point. And in fact, that's one of the things that the sponsors um, value most. It's h much easier for us to get sponsors to give us money if we say people will be working on this or that technical part of Debian than if we just say, well, it's, we'll have talks and then it will have a benefit later on. Um, and we also s recognize that there are other things that DevConf can be positive for, including motivating contributors who have a nice time um, and mo um, giving some benefit to the local free software community in the places we hold the conference. But the outcome of the discussion was that these, although we want to promote both of those purposes, those are somewhat secondary to the f um, first listed points. Uh, so another thing we had achieved leading up to last year's DevConf was sorting out the different... How, how it yeah. fits organizationally. Yeah. So there have been, as in many things in Debian, there were different views about what was reality, <laughs> <laughs> rather than just straightforward disagreements about how things should be. So the kind of extreme positions were well, there was, a fa there was a group of people, for example, as previously with, say, the um, d DAMs, Debian account managers, there were people previously who used to say that because they existed before the Constitution, they weren't controlled by the Constitution. Uh, yeah, well, uh, about uh, DevConf, well, DevConf, DevConf started uh, when there was already a Constitution, yeah. but it started as a project that was linked to Debian but wasn't inside of it. Yeah. So uh, for many years we were run separately. We didn't share, well, w what you will soon say, we, we never shared the budget, we didn't count on Debian until we had these uh, agreements and uh, formalized everything. Um, so hopefully by now it's much clearer that everyone agreed, whether or not they thought it already was, everyone agreed that going forwards, DevConf was part of Debian. Um, and that it should be managed in a way that reflected that. So I, I just want to add to this uh, part about uh, DevCon yeah. finances and Debian finances that, uh, well, we, we have hit reality. I mean, it's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah. The accounts for Bosnia were just closed about one month ago yeah. or one and a half months yeah. ago. So. A week ago. <laughs> uh, no, well, one week ago we were here. Anyway, uh, they were closed uh, just uh, very recently. There was an overlap uh, of uh, w when we had DC 11 and DC 12 budgets open, yeah. of course, in very different states. Uh, but yeah, uh, we will have to work uh, how this uh, flow yeah. should be managed. And this, uh, we should try, I think, we should try harder before we give up on this point. So. The, uh, I mean, since we're talking about this anyway, also, if people want to jump in and say things, please do. This is not just a presentation. 
Um, but the kind of agreement made here on this point was that DevConf would, in the long term, try not to cost money for general Debian funds, effectively. Which means that we, in practice, that means we should tr always try to keep some... Each year we should be aiming for it to make a small profit for Debian, effectively so that in the longer term we have the opportunity to have some financial problem and take money back from Debian. Well, and the, on this uh, line, for example, this year, the lateness on the travel sponsorship uh, was uh, due to us being maybe too careful, but well, careful enough, because we were approved uh, some, uh, to spend some money over what we got last year. Last year we had a nice uh, surplus. Uh, we were approved more money, but we decided to use it uh, responsibly, aiming uh, to, to still to be uh, not below zero uh, after the conference. I hope we can manage. Yeah, I mean, uh, because again, although there is a kind of group of people who are calculating the, in, who calculate the numbers very precisely, and therefore say, this last year we had whatever it is, one, th one ten thousand. Um, $112.34 extra, and therefore we can spend that this year, but that doesn't really reflect the spirit of the kind of agreement if we just try to spend the money, because maybe two years later, maybe we have a disaster and a big loss. So, um, although it's, although we, we, in a way, the money that we, if we have spare money, in, in some sense that's kind of available for us, but I don't think it's correct for us just to to view it as being there to spend in the same way as money we have raised in the current year. Yeah, uh, I completely agree to this, uh, that um, it should be handled that way. What I think we should also try to do is that um, to see the DebConf budget as soon as it's um, agreed upon by the team and by the DPL yeah. is money we're actually allowed to spend yeah or without fulfilling the income side at each step. So we can, in the phase where we're still gathering money, already spend more money than we have because on both sides it's just an expectation yeah. of how much we will need or uh, how much we will get in. And if this doesn't match in the end, we have to learn for the next year to do it better. Yeah, and two points in relation to that quickly. One is the we agreed that the overall budget should be taken to the DPL and effectively the project and approved, and that hasn't happened yet for this DevConf, so next time we should try to actually do this. Um, specifically on the point of travel sponsorship, again, although our own accounting people have been quite cautious about it within DevConf, there is a absolute permission from the Debian project via the DPL that if we want to spend, for example, travel sponsorship money in particular earlier on, yes, we should agree that not just within our team, but that's fine to do. We don't need to have mon sponsorship income yet at that stage to spend it. And maybe one thing to add also is that it becomes easier to understand that we can spend early money if you unzoom. I mean, if you take a look at across the years, then it's a rolling budget and we are just spending money that we have left from last year also. And I yes, mean, again, I'm cautious about saying yeah, of course, it's, but I mean we, it's not our money, but just because it's from last year, it is, it, at effect, from my point of view, I'd say at the end of DevConf, it is just Debian money. Yes, yes but what I mean is that it's not a wallet that is empty when you start the organization that fills and that becomes empty yeah. at the end. It's the wallet, but you still have a bank that you can go and yeah. get money yeah, from. Yeah, we are part of Debian, so we can take money. So we had the discussion with Godens earlier in the week, whether... Uh, DSA can spend, uh, for example, the Debcon's profit to buy hardware. If it's a rolling budget, we can. If it's not, then we can't. So this is, uh, is something that I haven't heard a clear answer. This is the first time I, from you I heard something, yeah. but it still seems some disagreement with the team. And it would be nice to have a clear view, and this is, I realize this is not yeah. only your So opinion. again, this, at the moment, this is, another, this is effectively a point where the same problem that there is, there is meant to be an agreement but people disagree about exactly how to interpret that agreement. So, yeah. And I think... Oh. No, there's... Uh, yeah, uh, knowing, knowing how much uh, we will... I mean, uh, going back to, uh, 
to what you were saying before that uh, we, we have not done this explicit step of going through the DPL to give the estimated budget. The thing is, at least this year, I don't know how it will be next year or following, not because it's Switzerland, but uh, because every year is different. This year, the budget changed so much, so many times, that at any given point, we would have been <coughs> approved for something bound to change sharply. And so, so could you? Sh I wasn't involved this year, definitely. If, if you could say in a few words why this happened. Well, first of all, we uh, well the the team originally proposed a different venue, uh, which uh, was it seemed like the only place in Managua that would be able to support uh, something this size. Uh, then we, uh, after some ad adjustments, for example, turns out that due to the crisis in Europe and due to uh, being a, a more expensive to travel here than some expected and whatnot. We had less attendance than, la than last year. So costs w went down, but also accommodation requirements. And uh, we, uh, somebody thought about coming to this university and, uh, well, f at first uh, we had a uh, presupuesto. Uh, well, yeah, an estimate of, uh, of like $30,000 for renting the university. But uh, uh, insisting on, on it, they reach an, ag an agreement to pay about one third of that. So that's the reason the university is listed as a sponsor, because they're giving us a huge discount, even though we're paying. Or things like that. We didn't count on any of the government's help earlier on. In the end, we received a good part of the costs of the hotel, and uh, so, so, so we really helped us. Uh, I mean, we're paying about one third of the cost of uh, the regular rooms, so Two thirds. Well, yeah, yeah. The budget was reduced many times. So I mean, yeah. No, but you, you requested details. So when you make a budget at the start of the year and you send the DPL and you have uh, like also covered like a ten percent more for damages or whatever, then and if you make a profit, all the better. But the problem is if you're over budget. As, yep. uh, and my nationality proves that, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, anyway, I think we, no one is against us trying this experiment more like another time to see if we could see if we can make this work. Just a, a short note to the changing budget. I think the way to do this is if it changes significantly, we just have to reapprove the budget or reapprove the changes. Maybe we can come back to the money topic, but just come through some of the other points in the meantime. So, so yeah, one point that is still not really, there's been a little progress, and maybe there'll be more following DevCon, but it's not really resolved at the moment, is because of the way things developed and the people involved, um, we have a kind of entire, infra well, a separate infrastructure for DevConf, including things like db.devconf.org for the <laughs> account management, which, yeah, it does actually make sense in a way, but also it is another service that we have to maintain, yeah. so on, yeah. Um, none of this is really urgent tasks, more That's the, the reason it wasn't funded. yeah, exactly, which is why not, not much has happened in the past year, but it is something we should bear in mind, because as, peop as people who have been managing these services become more busy, we should ask whether it really makes sense to find a, new find a new set of volunteers to take them on or whether we can merge them back into existing Debian infrastructure and then it's not the problem of the DevConf team at least to find those volunteers. Um, I mean, again, at the moment they've been very well managed, everything is great, but again, it would be a pity if in the future, for example, we lose the list archive because someone who we don't have proper volunteers to look after it, for example. In point of fact on that, um, I found that each, at least on the front desk level, each front desk of every venue, of each venue that we've been to, has been run completely differently. And they're reinventing the wheel yep. each and every time we come in. So there's, there always seems to be mass chaos. There always seems to be mass communication issues. Nobody knows what's going on anywhere. 
and it seems like they're they're just reinventing it each each specific year. And we I, I think it is important to have overlap each year with with the same people, just to keep those concerns and those communication issues done. I but mean. this also relates to a thing that's been developing during the last year, and we should try to continue even in these next months after DevConf, which is the DevConf manual, uh, which is just pages in the wiki, but is trying to document some of the processes, including things like front desk. Did you want? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to comment on this as well. Front desk is one of the the, the places where most of the local population can easily relate to, and we often prefer somebody local to always be at uh, front desk because if somebody asks some uh, about uh, where to whatever, or I need help translating whatever to the, to this language, well, it will be it, it will need a local. Here, I I cannot uh, do many things because I don't know Managua and I don't know many ways, so. That may be one of the main reasons why the workflow is different, because it's different people running it. Now, this year, for example, I saw uh, Morey spent quite a lot of time, at, at least at the beginning. I think it was uh, also like a, 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 a being as training wheels for the, for the team to be there. Uh, well, this relates a bit to something that's also on this slide. I think... Uh, it, it was not so hard this time, but uh, we were a bit worried earlier on this uh, cycle that uh, after we got the formal delegation, it seemed that uh, people who were regularly involved in uh, DevConf organization took a couple of steps back because there were now delegates and locals. Then maybe some people f uh, felt they were not needed. I'm not saying it, it, this was for everybody, of course, I know there were many reasons for uh, people to reduce the involvement, but at some point we did feel it was uh, the three of us and the, uh, the locals with uh, sporadic intervention from others. So we have to find a way to, to keep uh, a bigger team. I think on this point, there has been a problem over several years that in the past we have n always recruited new core DevConf team people from previous local teams. But we'd ha when we got maybe, we have got a couple of people say from New York, but they're more in specific areas, for example in networking or other topics like this, not so much in the general management because of people's time availability and so on. And then again from Bosnia say, we've got some people who are interested, but again, no one who is really stepping in to be a a kind of core person. But I think we should uh, actively ping the people from Bosnia. Yeah. As we're going close to, to Bosnia. I'm sure some of them will yeah. be in Switzerland. But again, I mean, although it's... Um, I, I you know no problem. Yeah, but again, the local team here, I know at the moment everyone is completely exhausted and probably after DevConf, you don't want to think about DevConf ever again. But if any of you can, it really is good for the organization if you can just even if it's just to come to some of the IRC meetings or occasionally read the mailing list and send your view, because so much of our experience is really with the local teams. I mean, even, even in this kind of a dev conflict like this, even while we have the chairs, um, we see some things, but a lot of the practical experience is with the local team. Um, and if the local teams don't stay involved, then we lose a lot of um, the benefits that we can have for the future teams there. Well, something that we should consider uh, now that it's been slight, uh, uh, like one year and a half that, uh, from the delegation is whether we should explicitly rotate the, yeah. the chairness. Yeah. So one, I mean, what, one thing we've done is, as well as having the chairs, we now have, there exists as a idea what we call the DevConf committee. Mm -hmm. At the moment, this has only been used for the decision process over bit between bids to avoid it just being a, a f sort of cabal of a few people. Um, it would, what I would like to see, I don't know how we formalize it. I'm sure other people have some ideas about this. I would like as if we could, not to write more rules and procedures necessarily, but to see if we can make the people also who join the committee not just feel a responsibility for the decision, but also to 
um, feel that it's a it's well as a as support for the general process. And again, some of these people maybe they don't have time to come to every meeting or to read every message on the lists. But these are all people who have had some experience from running DevCons before. So again, if we could find a better way to draw on their knowledge, this would also be very beneficial. Um, so yeah, we, I don't know exactly what's best in that, but we should be trying to think how we can draw these people in better. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Oh. So it seemed like we jumped over the infrastructure uh, overlap thing. We, we talked about a bit. Well, it has, been, it has been improving. I, th I think it is not an urgent problem, but it is something whenever we see a good way to move something without breaking things, we should consider doing it. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I, I, we are trying. Uh, well, uh, Gaudens uh, was uh, approaching me uh, to uh, to discuss on how to split uh, our current SVN to Git, and of course that will go to. to yeah, though this is not actually solving the problem because we already moved that to Alioth anyway. Well, so yeah, that's a different question. Okay, right. Yeah. But for example, uh, the Pentaverf instance we have now, one of the main blockers is uh, it's very hard to hack on it because. The only machine I should be making changes to uh, while developing is so slow I cannot use it. So I can only work on the live copy. Yeah. And whenever I make a modification, <laughs> I have to restart the server, which uh, breaks the system for like half a minute. So if people are busy, I cannot yeah. fix things. <laughs> if we were running on DSA hardware. Yeah. Just yeah. since it was mentioned there, actually, this question of migrating the VCS, I'm on a technical level, I'm very, I agree entirely. I just wanted to point out again this question of keeping our knowledge and experience that I'm very worried if we migrate to a more secure solution where current local, where the new local teams cannot access old data because that would really be bad. Um, maybe actually um, Felix could say something yeah. of whether, what he, what, as, an, as a current local team person, how, whether you think this is useful data, but yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I don't know if it's planned to have time to have this discussion here. Um, so, because I talked to several global and also to Felix, I think, um, and we discussed this a bit, I think I really understand your concerns and I mostly agree. Um, one thing is that I think that most people, for various reasons, some are more valid than the others, might want just to move to Git because it's the new cool thing. And also because of valid reasons, like you can work offline and stuff. I, but, but I agree that most of the Git features we actually don't need. I think it, they won't do, do harm because mm. um, if you don't push it, others won't see it, so it's a bit worthless. So there's incentive to push. And um, on the organizational level, I think we need to split the report Citoris if you go to Git because it's no longer possible to do partial checkouts. You can have partial trees, but you need the whole .git repository directory. And um, it's just too big. And for the access rights, my proposal now, after thinking about it a bit, is to have it as um, for DebConf data to stay with the current model as it is and to have um, read access public and easy access for writing. And for DebCon um, team, that's something uh, we developed to work with uh, Gunnar. The proposal is to have each year one of the, one trusted person from the locals in the admin group, so he can at his own discretion add people. And that we do after each DebCon, we do a cleanup and throw out people that no longer need that access. But, and so like this, we can avoid to have um, projects per year because I agree that that's a hassle and then we would have to add some selected locals to the previous years to guarantee your access and I think that's yeah. really valuable to yeah, have the previous memory. I don't know if, if people here agree that that's a good way to go. Again, part of my worry is not just about the having access or not, but if it's too much effort 
to access the old data, people won't bother. So, yeah. yeah. I think. I didn't uh, um, check the size exactly, but I think it's doable to have all of the DevConf team in one Git repository. I know. It's also, actually, on the point, there is some data in the team repository that just shouldn't be there. So we should consider when we, although it obviously it's nice to import and keep all history, blah, blah, but we should also consider just deleting some of these things that it shouldn't be there um, in the first place. Yeah, so if people send me specific SVN revisions to drop, I can just drop them, that's easy. Dars already sent me something I will drop if I do the conversion. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's important to keep uh, history and the uh, track of how things were developed uh, uh, following uh, on time, but that's mainly on the data that, that, that changes and we, ha we want to track the changes. I think that the, the, the private, the team repository, uh, doesn't have to be, we, we don't have to import uh, history, uh, versions history. We can lose that. Oh, the, that the change, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the changes. Yeah, yeah. We want to keep the, uh, the whole of the data that's there. Uh, we may keep the, I mean, the historical SVN doesn't uh, bother us too much. But I think, yes, we, we, we can delete some things uh, by just uh, taking a snapshot of, of how it is today. I don't think there is any value on getting all the data since uh, five years ago, I think it was started. Um, I think there's a value. I, re I, n I don't know if it was because our team wasn't really involved in Debian before, but um, for us, I think for all of us, it was really nice to have more than five years backlog for to DebConf because even though in the last three years maybe things or in certain areas some things weren't like really important or weren't like really working as good as before, it was really good to go five, six years back sometimes and just look at it and I, I really started like checking out branch uh, subdirectory by subdirectory and at the end I ended up like having almost every year in my, in my computer. No, yeah, 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 but yeah. what I mean, I mean uh, having the whole of the information we have, we should keep everything. But if we are facing the, this decision of uh, we have some data that should be cleared, some private data, that, uh, personal data that should have never been yep. in the repository, we can just clear the issue with the, the least amount uh, of hassle possible by taking a snapshot of the whole of the of it and deleting the history. We don't need it. But I mean, I if there is need for it, I will shut up and accept it. But uh, I think we're getting too much. Yeah. yeah. Should we? Yeah. I think we we more or less agree on this. So, no, just. But, just but the final <laughs> <thing comes. laughs> so, people agree that we do want to do this conversion in the way we said now, and then I will just go forward and yeah. talk to Ganev how to do it technically, yeah. or do you think it needs more discussion? The only thing I see from this is that it might be useful to have a period when there's a proposed new version and people can check through for other data that shouldn't be preserved. Okay, so but then I will do a proposed conversion and wait like one or two weeks and then we'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Jumping off, to top, off topic, um, one thing that has succeeded from our point of view is that we killed off the DevConf press team um, and we now use the Debian press team instead. Um, we should get better at using it though. Um, Paul's thinking about saying something. Um, the uh, Debian press team is currently understaffed so we need DevConf people in the team as well. I'm, I was press ganged into this. So yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing, I'm on the wiki admin team. Um, this came up, emerging the two wikis came up last year and I talked briefly on IRC with people on the DevConf team channel. It seemed there was a little bit of resistance to that idea. We spent quite a long time before, one, not that many years ago, demerging it. Um, <laughs> I think... It would, I would, from my point of view, it would be mu the, sa the best solution in a way, which is not necessarily one that the wiki team would like, is that the wiki people, as well, on, on the side of doing the admin for the main wiki, they also kind of press the button and just copy the same configuration across for 
DevConf one. Uh, because at the moment it's a different wiki system, which is, well, that's maybe our fault we should solve it, but even for the namespace, it's, it was kind of got ridiculous before when we had everything under wiki slash devconf slash devconf slash devconf slash devconf slash devconf 12. I mean, whatever. You know, it doesn't make a nice thing for people to find. And I spend most of the day typing penta.devconf.org slash penta slash penta bar. So. <laughs> Regarding the infrastructures, the other infrastructure things, like um, I, I'm not going to go out with lists because that's list master, uh, but regarding UDLDAP or other sysadmin stuff and with my DSA hat, we've never heard anything from DevConf people like this is the, what we need. Um, and either you're not doing anything in this area, which yeah. I understand if that, that's what's going on, but I hate it to see people trying to work around things. There is a Deb DevConf sysadmin team most of whom are inactive, but the policy of the DevConf sysadmin team has been that they like having their own services. So we haven't, yeah, Gunnar wants to. Uh, no, no, you continue, please finish your idea. Well, no, I'll, I mean, it's, it's not really a, it's just that's the status. Yep. So I personally, if, if there's no reason for me, if there are people doing the work in the DevConf, although I don't think it makes sense to duplicate it, it's also not nice to tell them that their work is useless and, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not, uh, not useless, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, from, uh, the most visible part of the, of the team uh, is Jörg. Uh, he's, of course, a great administrator. Uh, he, well, he likes having control, and uh, yeah, it, there's been, I mean, I, I, I hope I'm, I'm not talking behind his back, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I trust that uh, my my account privileges are dropping by the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because I don't want to <laughs> to be responsible for more. No, but I think uh, this policy of we want to administer our own stuff is because he is the most visible part of this team. So, well, maybe we should discuss this, but not here, yeah. but in the list and the. Uh, with you uh, as part of, the, uh, well, with DSA as part of the discussion. But I'm not sure what you're saying here. It seems to be an agreement that you need to merge stuff with Debian, and then you're saying that, well, but this is uh, separate and works, so we shouldn't merge. My view is so that it should be merged, and that this will happen at some point, mm -hmm. but that it's not beneficial for me to try to push this in the short term. To invest time. Fair enough. Yeah. So. Maybe, again, some of these other points here are in, under this heading, which, again, I think it's better if we discuss on the list or subsequently. Um, one, th one point I would like to raise again here is this um, at the top of the page now, the about, again, we've only got a couple of minutes, so just to flag it up as an issue, is this DevCon fundraising team. Yeah, fair enough. So just on the UDL that oh. type stuff. Uh, yeah. I think at least part of the reason for keeping them separate wasn't the way around you're just presenting it, but to keep random people that aren't ever going to be DDs out of UDLDAP. And that's so that's the reverse driver for keeping them separate. I want to say something about the fundraising team. Um, what I saw and what I've seen in all DEP cons, as far as I know, um, there's no continuity in who were the sponsors, who was the contact, who um, wanted to sponsor but didn't sponsor at the end, who doesn't want to know anything about us anymore. So like having at least like this documented would help I think every new team for the next years just to know yeah. to write to and it's not like the best way to rely on people like doing a call and hoping that people stand up and contacting every year again their contacts. So um, I think the first step with this is doing a list and then there are other things that I just think that it would be good to keep in contact with sponsors. I think that sponsors should at least get a final report in an email. That's just nice and it helps that every six months they get a notice from DebConf. Um, so I definitely think that it would be a good thing that would help in the future to get and it more organized. Uh, I want to bring back an idea I, uh, 
put forward on the mailing list after 2010, the idea of having permanent sponsors uh, being actual sponsors, not only the network sponsors. Uh, that will help us a lot, and it will help our sponsors a lot with the planning. That means we give them a, a figure before December so they can budget, and they don't need any uh, brochure because they are already permanent sponsors. Uh, so we can invite certain people, certain companies, to, to become permanent sponsors, and we put their logo on defcon.org. From and my point of view, this sounds fine, but I would think this is a thing for the Debian fundraising team to think about. Rather, it, again, this is the kind of thing that if we had a proper fundraising team, as preferably even with some people somehow found <coughs> who actually have experience in this area, not just some geeks like me trying it for the first time, um, then people can actually, I mean, there, we, people who work, there are people who work professionally even as fundraisers and they know what does or doesn't work. We don't really know, but I'm sure we can get, if there was a team really working on this, even if we can't get those people directly into the team, I'm sure we can get some information from some people with a positive attitude to Debian and really learn what's better. Um, the other reason it's to be f in the name Debian fundraising team is because other parts of Debian until recently basically didn't spend money, um, but they're starting to do this. And there's a big danger if we don't, um, what's the? Well, yeah, if we don't work together, then we could actually cause problems. So a note to that, uh, a yeah. quick note. Uh, Gaudens approached me the other day about uh, us DSA, which we um, recently also announced that we have a five-year plan that involves spending uh, around 30,000 euros uh, or dollars, I don't remember, per year. So Gaudens suggested to me that DSA should coordinate with Debcon's sponsorship team so that we ask sponsors once instead of twice. And I don't find this is entirely, I find it reasonable to coordinate, but I don't find reasonable DSA talking with Debcon, which exactly. have very different requirements. Yeah. Uh, so I would too support a, yeah. a, a unified I think, fundraising yeah. team, which can also have yeah. unified benefits. So yeah. if, if someone comes to, to Debian and says, here's 100K to buy uh, servers, then I would, I would expect them to be yeah. uh, on De uh, Debcon's banners, yeah. even if they didn't give money to Debcon itself. Or the other way around, maybe. But. Um, yeah, when we originally talked about this uh, together, uh, I was a bit skeptical. I think I'm a bit skeptical still, but I see that there should be, in theory, in an ideal world, this one fundraising team. The problem I see is that um, if this happens and there's kind of a shift of responsibility. We might end up just nothing, having no fans at all because I think in Debian we don't have people that are genuinely interested in just do fundraising, but they're interested in doing fundraising because they want this cool new hardware or because they want to run this cool conference. So I think, in my, so as I see it now, I think we should have this common team, but it should be staffed by those actually needing money. So it should be staffed by DSA, it should be staffed by DebConf team, and if others want to participate, we're, as every Debian team should be very open, and we, I would love to see people just doing uh, fundraising, but if we just rely on this happening sure. out of nothing, I, it's bound to fail. Okay, I think that's all we have. Oh, we are over time by some margin, so we should really stop and let the video team, which means Phil uh, and other people, uh, stop if they're still awake. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And hopefully we can continue these discussions on the lists and IRC um, once everyone gets home. Thanks for coming. <laughs>